Hello everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a Kotlin multi-platform project within minutes. The links to all the resources used will be in the description. The first thing you're going to need to do is download and install the latest version of Android Studio. If you plan on building your app for iOS, you will need Xcode, which can only be run on a Mac. Since I'm recording this on a Windows PC, I can't demonstrate the steps in their entirety. However, JetBrains provides an excellent tutorial on how to set up the environment on your Mac. If you don't have a Mac, you can still write the shared code for your application on a Windows PC. You just won't be able to compile it into an application that can run on an iPhone until you have access to a Mac. This could also be done down the line using a cloud computing service like Mac Stadium. Once you have everything downloaded and installed, open up Android Studio and navigate to where it says Plugins. In here, search for Kotlin Multi-Platform. As you see, Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile pops up. Simply click Install. Next, let's clear this search bar, then navigate to where it says Installed. Here we just want to check that we have Compose Multi-Platform installed, as well as verify that our Kotlin plugin is up to date. After that, just close and reopen Android Studio to make sure that the updates have taken effect. Now we're ready to set up our project. Fortunately, JetBrains has provided a Kotlin multi-platform wizard, which simplifies the process. Go ahead and pick a name for your project and a unique project ID. After that, you can decide which platforms you plan on building your application for. By default, it's gonna select Android and iOS, but I'm gonna go ahead and select desktop as well. It's worth noting that KMP and Compose Multi-Platform are still under development and are constantly being updated. Go ahead and click Download. Once you have that downloaded, you'll simply want to extract the project folder to whichever location you'd like. For me, that's in my projects directory. Now back in Android Studio, go ahead and select Open and then navigate to wherever you placed your project. Select OK. And now you wait for the Gradle build to finish running. This might take a little while. If you get this pop-up telling you to update your Android Gradle plugin, you can go ahead and do that. Just select Run These Steps and wait for that to finish. Do note that running the Gradle update on a project that is in process could have unforeseen consequences, so it's always best to make sure you have a backup that you can roll back to. Once everything's finished setting up, navigate up to this corner where it says Android, select the drop-down, and then choose Project. In here, you can see that you have the Compose App directory, you can think of that as your main directory for your whole project. You also have this iOS app directory, which contains your Xcode project. However, you shouldn't have to worry about it too much because most all of our code can be written in the shared project folder. Inside of the compose app directory, you'll have your shared source set as well as the shared Gradle build file. Don't worry about this Gradle build file for now. It looks scary, but its purpose is just to define any dependencies or libraries that your project's using. Go ahead and open up your source set folder and inside here you'll see Android main, common main, desktop main, and iOS main. The most important out of all of these is the common main. It's where all of your shared code will be written. Inside of here you'll see that we have a resources folder which would just contain strings or images or resources that are shared throughout your project. Inside of this Kotlin directory here is where you'll be placing all of the shared code for your app, which should be the vast majority of it. As you'll see here, by default, we're provided with a Kotlin file titled app, which is intended to serve as the entry point or sort of the heart of our application. All this really is is a composable function that we're calling app, which we're gonna be using like the main function from most other programming languages. You also notice that by default, we have a greeting file as well as this platform file. These are just used by this default greeting screen that JetBrains has provided us with. Let's go ahead and run this Compose app to take a look at it. It might take a little while for your virtual device to boot up. As you can see, this default app is just a blank screen with a button that says click me, which once you click it has an animated Jetpack Compose logo. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. Now let's go ahead and add build configurations for iOS and desktop. Up here where it says Compose App, go ahead and select the dropdown and then click Edit Configurations. In here, you might already have an iOS build configuration by default, but if you don't, go ahead and click this plus button, then navigate to iOS Application. Right here, you'll need to select the Xcode project file, which if you remember is in the iOS app section of the project that we're currently inside of. So let's open our browser and then navigate down to iOS app, and then iOS app Xcode project. Unfortunately, I can't show you all the rest of these steps because I'm running this on a Windows PC, as it says here. However, JetBrains does provide an excellent write-up on how to get the environment set up in case you're having issues. I'm gonna go ahead and select this minus button to remove it since I can't run it on my PC. Now let's add the desktop build configuration. Click the plus button again, and then select Gradle. Next, we'll need to copy this command here. 
and paste it right here. Select apply, then OK. Now let's go ahead and run this desktop application. And as you can see, it's exactly the same as the application we saw before. It's just a blank screen with the click me button that reveals the Jetpack Compose logo. We can go ahead and close this. And now we're pretty much ready to start building our multi-platform application. However, before we wrap it up, let's just clean up this project a little bit and add directories for unit tests. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all of this right here and then select Control Alt O to clean up my imports. Next, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete both of these files since they were being used by that default greeting. And now we're just left with this blank app composable, which is using the default material theme. You could also create your own custom theme to use here. And you might be wondering what's going on inside of these other directories, such as Android main, desktop main. Let's go ahead and take a look in the Android main. If you're already familiar with Android development, then this is the folder that you're used to seeing. This Kotlin directory is all of your normal Android project files, like the main activity file. All this is doing in our case is just calling our app composable, and ideally we'll leave it this way. We can also go ahead and just delete this platform file as it was used by our default greeting. The same thing goes over here with our desktop main. As you can see, we have a main Kotlin program, and all it does is call our application. Once again, we can just delete this platform file that was used by the default greeting. As you would expect, it's the exact same deal over here. We have our main view controller, this is going to throw an error for me since I'm running on Windows. It's a little annoying that if you accidentally open one of these files, the only way to get rid of the error message is by closing and reopening Android Studio. Once again, I'll delete this platform file since it's just part of that default greeting. It was utilizing that actual and expect implementation system that Kotlin multi-platform projects have access to. But for the sake of this tutorial, we won't get into all that. And the last thing that I'm going to show you is how to add a directory for unit tests. For this, we're going to need to open up our shared build.gradle file here within the compose app folder. And then in here, navigate down to source sets. And in here, we're going to add a source set for common tests. As you can see, it's already pre-populating here. Then we'll add dot dependencies, and then we'll add implementation, libs, dot, dot, kotlin, dot, test. This implementation here gives you access to a pure kotlin testing suite, which can be used on any platform. Now we're going to go ahead and make a directory to actually hold those tests. So back here where it says source, right click it, then new, directory, and start typing in common. And as you can see here, it pre-populates common test kotlin. Go ahead and select that, hit enter. And inside of this Kotlin folder is where you'll put all of your unit tests for any of your common shared code. And of course the project structure inside of this common test directory should match the project structure inside of your common main directory. We can also go ahead and repeat this process by right clicking the source folder, new directory, and we'll add Android unit tests slash Kotlin right here. And you can also do the exact same thing for iOS test. Down here where it says iOS test Kotlin, just go ahead and do that. Then all of your iOS specific implementations can be tested in this folder. And of course, let's not forget to sync our Gradle file by clicking this sync now button. And with that, we really are all set up to start developing our very own Kotlin multi-platform application. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, it would mean the world to me if you hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more Kotlin multi-platform tutorials in the future. Thank you for watching and until next time.